I'm Oliani Mejia. And I'm Peter Kistler. And we are here with Silva Priori, who just presented uh, the most recent update from uh, management and long QT syndrome and CPVT. Thank you so much for being with sure, us. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure and our pleasure to have you here. Can you just tell us the highlights and what are the new guidelines recommendation for this uh, long QT syndrome and CPVT? Sure, thank you very much. So first of all, as I have said in my introduction, we have this year much stronger recommendations for the use of genetic testing that is still very often not done for lack of availability or cost or others. But finally, we have more robust evidence to identify which are the pathogenic mutations. And so the impact is so important on family members that we have genetic testing as a class one. So really forcing people to incorporate it in the diagnostic. Then another important uh, um, new concept uh, is really the stronger evidence that we have for non-selective beta blockers, both in long QT and in CPVT, that they present an advantage. So these are propranolol and nadolol and should be the preferred choice. Then I also would like to say that for the patients who are resistant in both conditions uh, to the medical therapy, we have uh, with the same uh, strengths of recommendation the option to go either for uh, sympathetic denervation given the importance of the adrenergic trigger or to go with the ICD and finally for long QT syndrome we have uh, in these guidelines a new diagnostic score and a new restratification scores so that will be soon part of an app of the ESC so thank you so much. Sure. This is a huge help for us, right? So what if I, we were thinking about genetic testing for a while, so finally we have an extra portion yes. uh, for doing it. And the mexilatin just went up as a recommendation. For the the mexilatin, yes, mm -hmm. uh, instead of a 2A now is a class 1. We know that there is the problem that in some countries mexilatin is not it's available. I uh, just remind that there are other alternatives like uh, flaconide with the attention that the patient does not develop ST segment elevation. And also ranolazine in the adult population is emerging as an alternative. We couldn't specifically provide a recommendation because there are not many studies on that. But I would say that just for uh, uh, locations where the mexilatin is not available, these are other two alternatives might be considered. And again, recommended against yeah. electrophysiologic studies and users, right? The invasive testing. Uh, the invasive testing yeah, uh, for both conditions yeah. is something that should uh, not, not be, be done, done because there is not an evidence of, of uh, health. And Sylvia, the, the role of an ICD, I had the impression from the new guidelines that it was perhaps beta blockers first, yes. even in the situation of a survivor of cardiac right. arrest. Yes, beta blockers is the first step. If there is a failure of beta blocker, non-selective with the proper dose uh, that for nadolol is one milligram per kilo, um, or the highest tolerated dose for the patients, then in CPVT you may elect to add flaconide before going farther. In long QT you don't have uh, other unless for the LQ3 add mexilatin. And if the patient continues to have issues with either denervation or ICD. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you very much for your time and we really appreciate you speaking to us on uh, Hard Rhythm TV. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You.